That is the worst one. <laughs> the first swing. Here we are live from the Santa Monica track with the palm trees in the background. Happy holidays, everybody. Editor-in-chief Doug Fisher Happy on his Kwanzaa. jump rope. On the jump Happy rope. Hanukkah. Have the uh, Cassius Clay Super Rare jacket on with the collaboration yeah. of uh, Ring Magazine, right? You like that? No, no, no. Actually, the Cassius Clay, is, that's just Super that's Rare. That's a straight Super Rare. Oh, yeah. But I see I the logo it. there. They do a great yeah. job. You Super have your Showtime hat on. That must be for the fights last, last night. Last night. And a nice triple header. Yeah. Coach uh, really liked all the fights last night. The you watched the Showtime broadcast, right? I loved them. They're really good. They're the best, they're the best broadcast booth. Yeah. It's the best yeah. boxing production. And the fights were good, especially yeah. the light heavyweight match between Jean Pascal and Badu oh, Jack. Oh, now, did you? I didn't bother scoring it round by round. Yeah. Were you guys okay with that decision? I thought it was very <laughs> close. I think it could have gone uh, either way. No, but I, I gave it. I, to I was Jack. okay. But, I, but I, didn't, I didn't score it either. Yeah. But I just thought Jack won the fight. Yeah. Okay. It was a great fight. I probably would have shaded towards Pascal, but uh, it could have gone. It really could have gone either way. I didn't okay. score it every so round. So it wasn't a poor but, decision. No. It's just the no. guy that folks no. didn't think. The majority of people yeah. on Twitter had it for, had for, it for Jack. Jack. Oh, yeah. okay. And I think CompuBox stats skewed think they towards had it also, Jack. Yeah. yeah. And I definitely wouldn't argue if they give it to Jack. Definitely, he deserved. Uh, both guys actually, uh, you know, put in a great effort. Well, so so um, his last two fights, Jean Pascal, he, he defeated uh, by technical decision. Marcus Brown. Marcus Brown. That's right. And mm -hmm. then he beat the guy that Marcus Brown beat, yeah. who was just as just al almost as decorated a so veteran. Pascal is as having he a big resurgence of his so that's, career. He's a he's a candidate for comeback of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's Ring right. Magazine's comeback of the year award went to Jamel Herring. Herring, right? But um, okay. Uh, somebody that you brought up off camera. The, the Japanese middleweight, Ryoto Murata. Murata yeah. I think a sure. lot of people slept on him for comeback right. of the year because he lost last October That's right. in such a manner to Rob, Rob Brandt, Brandt that a yep. lot of people were thinking, this guy they needs to retire, off. he's they garbage. Wrote, yep, they wrote him off. He's not even a real contender. Yeah. He comes back and he smashes, earlier this year, he smashes Brandt. Rob Brandt at home, yeah. And then he uh, he just beat uh, the young beat guy from guy. Canada, Stephen yeah. Butler. And he's a good comeback. Not only beating them, but selling out arenas in Japan. That's well, what, he's 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 that's, right up there with uh, Naoya Inoue. Actually, yeah. he's more popular in Japan than Inoue. I think Murata right Matt now is, is maybe the not most, as respected, but he's more. I think popular. he's the most popular out of the j current he's, Japanese fighters. He's a middleweight, and he was yeah. an Olympic gold medalist. That's where a lot of fighters they might win fights, but they forget the marketability aspect of it. When you're looking at a, a career or or popularity or like you said come back of the year if you can sell at arenas and win fights that that puts the extra edge there yeah coach what did you think about the interview that Badu Jack gave after the fight yes. took the high road Pure took the high road He's very classy a, guy Badu Jack is uh one of the uh I'd say one of the nicest guys in in boxing classiest guys and I, per I personally know his uh his chef James really? Lockwood, shout out to James Lockwood. He's a chef for uh, Triple G. Really? And uh, definitely, when he's in camp, uh, definitely a great, uh, great vibe uh, with him. And he's with Badu Jack. Does he cook for you too? Uh, I, I was able to sneak in a few meals when I was up at the training camp. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, he actually cooked at my place for uh, Triple G uh, before they went to camp uh, uh, the last two fights. So. Uh, James is a James is a good guy. Tom, so, what are people saying about Tank? What are people saying about Javante Davis? Look, I I think Tank is a tremendously talented rising star. Yeah. Um, I think missing the weight the first uh, on the first try, you know, shows a little bit of the crack of discipline. And yeah. you know, when you got a guy like uh, uh, Gamboa, who's an older guy, established guy with a name. No question, a good boxer, very experienced, but that's the type of guy you got to really shine against. It didn't seem like it was one of uh, one of uh, Tank's best performances. Yeah, most people thought that uh, the fight would be over by round five or six. That's what I thought. I thought it'd be an early stoppage. So did yeah. Tank. Maybe. I thought it'd be an early stoppage, sure. and then if you if you really if uh, Gamboa really ruptured his uh, Achilles tendon or injured Something his Achilles tendon, clearly bothered. Then yeah. that would even be more uh, of an argument for uh, for an earlier stoppage. So he didn't have the best performance. I don't know if it's you know sometimes when you're young you get the money, the fame, yeah. you know whatever it is, and you maybe. look at Andy Ruiz, perfect example. You know you don't uh, didn't uh, maybe not as disciplined. A lot of people can't handle that. Yeah, so, they can't be at their best look, when they're he's young, well and. He's young and, and it's uh, it's it's to be determined, uh, you know, how he goes into the middle part of his career. But uh, no, it's no question he's a very talented individual. But you know, you just hope the money and the fame don't 
catch up to him. That's what, you know, a lot of people don't appreciate about Floyd. You know, Floyd definitely flaunts a lot of his wealth and everything that he's gained, but there's no question that Floyd was always one of the hardest working yeah. and trained individuals oh, yeah. in boxing. His Work ego, yeah. his ego wouldn't let him yeah. not be prepared for, for right. a fight. So, you know, Floyd was able to balance that dominance in the ring and you know, all the accolades that he got outside, outside the Yeah, I, I think Davis is a welcome addition to the 135-pound division. Absolutely. Um, he's not yet like a top player, though. I mean, he is a player because he does move the needle, does put butts in the seats. Um, he'd be a, a – he adds, he adds something to any promotion. Sure. Um, he's a colorful guy. But I would not – I wouldn't put him in there with the champion Vasily Lomachenko. He's not ready for Lomachenko. Um, and there's even some young guys that, prior to this fight, I thought that he was, I would have made him a, a decided favorite against somebody like Ryan Garcia. Sure, uh, I was thinking now the same thing. Now I'm not thing. so sure. Gar now I think Garcia's it's a competitive, yeah, no, a and competitive fight. And the speed fight. and the instruction from Eddie Reynoso, I see that more as an even fight now, which yeah. I did not believe at all last year or even this year. Sweet Science uh, yeah. says hello. Well, that guy. Yeah. Did he ask about Jeff Horn yet? No, he's asking about. He should uh, be asking about Jeff Horn because he was awesome in that rematch with Zephra. He's thinking. Yeah. He's asking your opinion on Javante Davis and Rod Salka. That now you know what the, the the version of Tank we saw last night still gets rid of Salka pretty early, uh, but. Um, I do think he needs to, to have a busy 2020. Um, you know, there's guys who are his age that I think are more advanced than like Teofimo Lopez. Sure. Like Lopez, I'm like, go for yeah. it. If you want to, if you want to challenge, that's a, that's a great fight. That, that's not even a close fight. Yeah, but I'm just. He kills him. Yeah. You think uh, Lopez, Lopez, Lopez destroyed? Lopez. Oh, Lopez right now him. is you know. Teofimo's on a big roll. Yep. Yeah, he's, he's on a big he's, roll. Based on his last performance, he's got it together, and. Um, I'm seeing a more complete game from Lopez than I saw from Davis. That's the other thing about Seems Davis. That was, way. You know, his conditioning aside, and the focus, you know, he lost focus uh, late in the fight and got hit with a three-piece combination. Right. Right. Um, but the focus and the discipline aside, his game is not complete. He needs a more consistent jab. Uh, and, you know, and he's got good power punch selection. He's accurate when he lets the hands go, but... He throws one punch at a time. We need to see combinations from that guy. And Gamboa, it, Gamboa. What a tough there you guy. Go. He's, he's yeah. got, if he really Gamboa was, if he, he really got. was injured like that, you got to give him a lot of credit. And like you said, he was able to land. He had the speed, still the hand speed to land that three uh, three you punch know, combination. I don't think he ruptured his You think it was just I, a shoe malfunction? Might not be ruptured, no, no, no. but it it, it definitely himself. seemed like an injury. It's just uh, hard hard to say. Himself. What extent it was? I don't think he snapped it. If he snapped it, he'd be in agony. It wasn't like James Tony. No. James Tony, or remember Lucia Riker ruptured her Achilles tendon, and and that million dollar fight. Mario Lopez. And Mario, (laughs) yeah. Poor Mario. Yeah. And and uh, you got to give Showtime credit. It was a nice uh, triple header, Doug. You liked? I mean, uh, Dave, you liked the first. The first fight also, right, with uh, Us- Uskatai really and, and Thompson. Was, the scoring was perfect. And, that's how, and you got to say, the scoring was fair in uh, Georgia. But I tell you, it's really good. Pauly Mom, is really good. I like Pauly. Pauly's uh, definitely uh, come into his own as a uh, commentator. I, I think he's one of the best. Yeah. The best. Uh, what would that be, Doug? A color commentator? Yes. Or blow by blow? He, he definitely is no, one of the blow by blow. Uh, no, no, no. color commentators. Blow commentator. by blow is Morrow. Pauly is definitely one of the best uh, commentators on uh, TV right now for boxing. Yeah. But Pauly, it's not about Pauly anymore. Yeah. You know, it's all about the fight. Sure. He's really, he's very good. Yep. So that was a nice triple guy, header. That head guy. Al Bernstein? No, the, the guy, the lead guy. Oh, uh, Brian Custer. He's real. Yeah, he's, Brian he's Custer is great also. Yep, you, you're right. They, the Showtime has a tremendous uh, broadcast uh, crew. I think they're the best. Crew. Yeah. And it, but I think they're, they're the producers, good. the directors. Were, the people behind the scene or they're they're um they're veterans oh uh, mike montero uh, wrote in and said it's, up, it's confirmed that uh gamboa ruptured his achilles <laughs> wow so that's, that's uh, so you gotta give him a hey, lot of that's crazy now i mean you know had he been healthy maybe maybe he could have been more competitive or maybe he would have let his hands yeah. go more and given tank opportunities to catch right. him between volleys certainly the movement the foot movement you know spacing and distance is uh, important with the with the footwork if yeah, you have Bull's a ruptured Achilles. Yeah, chin was more solid than I thought it yeah. would be. Yeah. Um, we're used to seeing him go down, but I thought Tank could hit hard enough to actually put him out, you know, and that was not the case. So no, That's t- another thing about Tank. We have to understand this. 
Tank can't get up. He can't go on to like 140. Like I think 135. Give his body be, dimensions. But, but he still missed the weight. That's that's the that's paradox. The yeah. That's the quandary. Is you go up in weight and then you still don't Some make guys, it. That that doesn't. He just uh, does not have the yeah. body to. to, to, I, to My read on that, not knowing any of the background, is he thought he's going up in weight. He should make the weight easy. Yeah. And then over, you know, didn't didn't yeah. do it. Maybe he, maybe he uh, celebrated a little bit. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, you know. There was a lot of, you know what? There was a lot of people in this locker room and a lot of people on the stage. Sure. You know, it was a little bit of a strange scene See, there, seeing all the people uh, in the locker room. The show came on Showtime. I was watching on the internet. They had Steve Farhood. Yeah. Did a whole. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. They talked about. Steve Farhood is great. Yeah. He's, He's very good. And we got we got one more fight, uh, you know, coming up this year, or, or at least uh, a fight coming up this year is uh, uh, Kazuto Aoka, yes. who's also a very popular Japanese uh, champion. Versus uh, Javier Cintron. Cintron or from Puerto it, Rico. How do you pronounce it? Is it Javier? I think, I think Javier. Heavy, but, uh, Javier, Javier Cintron, who was a, a, a big time Puerto Rican amateur right. standout. That's a that's a tough fight. Was a pro. That's a mandatory uh, yes. defense, and he's defending his WBO. Uh, 115 pound super flyweight title, title. Yeah. and uh, so that's going to be a great fight. That's Eoka's that's the 28th. Awesome. He's, 28th he's so much in, fun uh, to watch. So much speed in Japan. And accuracy and combination punches. Good body puncher. I thought he looked uh, terrific against uh, Aston Palikde. Yeah, that's right against uh, Palikde. I was just in in Tokyo for that WBO convention. First <laughs> wow. time in Japan. Really enjoyed it. Mr. Honda was there, Akimi, all the, uh, the yeah, it was uh, it was a great time in uh, Tokyo. So we got that fight coming up, and then uh, did you want to recap? You know what I want to see? Uh. If um, Ioka retains the WBL title, yeah. I want to see Ioka versus uh, either uh, the ring champ, um, Juan Francisco Estrada, yeah. or I want to see uh, Ioka versus Chocolatito. Or uh, Yafai. Once Chocolatito gets it together. Yafai is a good fight, too. Yeah. Cal Yafai. Nah, I don't, uh, well, he doesn't work. He doesn't do it for he's me, He's a champion. Man. Yeah, he is. He is. He's undefeated, <laughs> but I, I, he thinks it out too much. He's not me. on that same level as uh, no, Estrada not. or Chocotito. Chocotito yeah. had a nice win on uh, Murata's uh, show uh, coming back in, in Japan. So Speaking Chocotito, of Chocolatito, when yeah. people talk about fighter of the decade, he's to he, me, it, he's a strong candidate. You said he's, for me, he's mine. He's, I say Floyd Mayweather is the fighter of the half decade. Right. From from t- from 2010 to 2015, 2015 right. Chocolatito Gonzalez, uh, to he's... me, is the king. The king of the, of the decade. decade. Okay, yes, he was, we'll go he with was that. Dominant, four 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 weight classes, and he fought the best. I would have. Best. You know what? In all all four weight classes. I would agree with that. One guy that we also talked about, who's off camera, who I'm naturally biased towards. But I think who got left off a lot of the ballots is a Triple G. Golovkin, man. Totally. You know, a, a champion every year from 2010 to uh, present. He just yes. won his IBF and IBO titles back. He he was so dominant at one point, Doug, that uh, he actually, as a unified champion, was making other champions vacate well, titles. Here's what I don't like. This is this is the logic of, of asshole fans. Daniel Gill right? vacated the title, not the so fighter. So they don't. So, so, know the so Canelo, Canelo Alvarez is Ring Magazine's number one rated fighter, pound for pound. Also with the transnational boxing rate. Right. Um, also with the Boxing Writers Association of America. Right. right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if he's going to be fighter of the year for the Boxing Writers Association, but. It's, it's a good it's chance. It's going he's, in that direction. He's Ring yeah. Magazine's fighter of the year. Okay. Now, people get upset about that. And I get it. People, Canelo has his haters. A lot of people thought that Triple G right. might have won so both those fights. So when I ask, why, why can't he be number one pound for pound? And why can't he be fighter you know, fighter of the year or fighter of the decade? They say, well, I think he lost those fights to Triple G. Right. And I say, fine. Then who do you have number one pound for pound? And they say Lomachenko or Terrence Crawford or somebody else. I say, listen, if you thought that Triple G... Hands down, won both fights against Canelo. He should be at least in your top three That's, pound for pound, absolutely. and he should be a strong candidate yep. for fighter of the decade. Because in your view, he's unbeaten, unified, middleweight champion of the world. And we'd be Ring he's Magazine crowd, champion. He'd be still. Ring Magazine's middleweight. Champion. And he's never missed a never missed a, a weigh-in weight in the no. first first time or second day weigh-ins. No PED <laughs> scandals with him. No no uh, positive testing. Even though he he's, was, he he's was insisted. One, he was number on, one pound on testing. for pound for a while in, by both Together Ring Magazine Chocotito. and ESPN. Yeah, one and two with Chocolatito. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, so I mean... And Vladimir Kuchko also... And Vladimir deserves... Uh, deserves a mention yeah. as uh, that, that heavyweight championship run he went on up until the uh, Anthony Joshua fight, who, you know, many people thought was his most exciting fight, uh, selling out Wembley Stadium, and uh, but just dominating the heavyweight division yeah, for yeah. as many defenses and as long as he did. Just look at what they did from did. 2010 up to the present. Yep. Here's the problem. Really, 2008 we're the all present. We're all enamored with undefeated records. Yep. So... Andre Ward, without question, he, he has to be a candidate. But, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm fine with Ward being a candidate, but it's just like, did he do as much as Vladimir Klitschko? Did he accomplish as much as Roman Gonzalez? But those I guys would, lost. Those guys lost fights. They lost, they lost fights, a couple but of fights, and it's like, well, you're done. I would lean towards the other guys, especially Vladimir. You know, he was selling out soccer stadiums all over the place, sold out arenas here in the U.S., and just dominating a division as, a as much defenses. as he did, and yeah. fighting in different countries. <laughs> yeah. that's, I think that's a big distinction, also. Yeah, that that exactly. Triple G also has. That Chocolatito also has. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to take all that into consideration. That's a good point. Chocolatito fought. In Central America, South America, North America, Japan, Japan. Mexico, yeah. Mexico, New yeah. York, uh, LA, and uh, of course uh, Vladimir fought all over Europe and in right. America. In in Moscow, in oh, a very yeah, a very Russia very Rebecca. very hostile situation with the tension between yeah. Ukraine and uh, Russia. Yeah, that's taking risks. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, Did you have a bodyguard there? Uh, Vladimir had a few bodyguards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was under the radar yeah. there in Moscow. That's, but, a, good, that's a good place but, to be. But we never, we haven't spoken about female uh, boxer of the decade, and I think it's hands down Cecilia Breakers. I'm wearing a uh, Cecilia uh, uh, sweatshirt. Um, that's a summit special. I think hands down for the ten years yeah. dominating uh, women's boxing, being a champion for. Uh, for all the years she has three guinness book of world records wow long, longest uh, reign of a unified champion longest uh, many the uh, most title defenses of a champion and the longest reign of you know just in general yeah. as, a, as a champion yeah so. nobody's defended all four belts as many, as times, many as times as she has, has. Yeah. yeah she's looking amazing. better than ever she looked very good in Monte Carlo. Yeah, she looked very good. So, yeah, so if you're enamored with undefeated records, be enamored that, that's with that your, one. That's the record. Because she's and undisputed. She's and undisputed she's also and fought. She defends she's title. also fought all over the world. Germany, the world. Norway, the U.S., Monte Carlo. So uh, we're going to make this quick today. Yeah, yeah here we go. Here so comes I, so the... I got uh, a few questions. All right, okay. let's go. Okay, and I think, uh, Tom, you can ask. Okay, so here we go. who was Bo Jack? Badu Jack. Bojack's uh, trainer. Trainer, uh, one of James Tony's former sparring partners, yeah. and uh, a great fighter in his own right, yeah. uh, Lou Deval. Right. Lou okay. was very uh, charismatic, uh, very, no, no, uh, very, I thought, very. Uh, he was as good as you could get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very animated in the corner. That yep. was right out of a Rocky movie, but yeah, he's a character. Very, he was very effective. Then. You know where he's I, from, right? Yeah, he's Long from Island. No, isn't no. it North Carolina? Well, he used to fight out of the Bronx. He yeah, he fought in the Bronx. Yeah, yeah he, he was yeah. in New York. I mean, he's a Bronx okay. fighter. What's his nickname? Honey Boy. You got it. Honey okay. Boy, yeah. Now, I want to ask you, what's his sister? And, and his sister yeah, was, yeah. was a, a good yeah, boxer a good also. Boxer. I remember her, her Melissa. Okay, yeah. what, what's her nickname? Honey Girl. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's Honey Bee? Honey Bee? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Is it a boxer? So I don't know. Who, I just threw that out there. No, but I remember Lou and uh, his sister Melissa. Yeah. Okay. Now, what fight. do they have yeah. as a sister brother act? The only ones that ever. Do they fight on the same show? They both are world champions. Yeah, they both, they're both world champions. champions. Yeah. Okay. Now, what, right. what's and uh, they both have a connection to Roy That's Jones a good point. Jr. There's been yeah. brothers. Oh, she does too. Yeah, she went out with him for a while. Oh, okay. And, now, yeah. and, and Roy and and Lou fought. That's right. Roy won right. one of his. his, right. his Wasn't his she dating anyway. Roy at the she time? She was dating him. Yeah, yeah I remember time, that. Yeah. I remember that story oh, too. Yeah, <laughs> and, and like unlike that, that uh, what, what's the kid from, from from around here? Gonzalez, Joe Gonzalez are all pissed off about uh, uh, okay. what's his, Shakur Stevenson dating his sister. Oh yeah. Yeah, Lou yeah. was like, yeah, that's all good. Yeah. And, and who, who did Lou lose his title to? Roy Jones. Right. And, and he has a distinction of dropping Roy Jones. You got it. Yeah. He knocked him down. Yeah. See, Doug's memory is still good. Dave, so good. Dave was actually, getting a little I bit just concerned. Watched that fight today on yeah. YouTube, you can see it. Was it. 90s, it was right? a yeah. real knockdown. Yeah, I know. It was a hard. It was boom. He's, Dave, he's a southpaw. Dave, it's what's real, your what's your favorite real. HBO documentary so far? So you you just told watch. me about it this I week. Just, I just watched it this week. It's the. Uh, 
Bill Belichick? Yeah, Belichick oh. and Saban, <laughs> football coaches. Okay. It's on HBO. It's the greatest show. Oh. It's Two of the most successful football Speaking coaches. Football. One yeah. pros did and OSU, one's... Uh, did Ohio State win last night? No, did they beat they, Clemson? Did they, did they I think they lost to Clemson. But uh, I know LSU won. LSU, yeah. LSU has Coach a great Heisman yeah. Heisman uh, Trophy oh. winner as their quarterback. Going to show some Columbus, Ohio pride. Shout out to Harold Parker, who's an LSU night. alumni. Yeah. Oh, really? Harold Parker, oh, that's yeah. Right. yeah. He played football at LSU. Did he? Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. So Harold you know Parker. Who Coach O is? No. He was a coach at SC, interim coach. Coach O? Because he didn't have the right style that they wanted for SC, you know, yeah. sort of a rough voice. Yeah. And, you know, sort of a rough looking guy. Yeah. They wouldn't hire him full time. Wow. They, they did. So he went to LSU. He's now. Great move. Yeah. Oh, that's I right. Think, yeah, now he's a he's now he's like a tremendous the celebrity tremendous, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yeah, but he yeah. was because they love football. Out yeah, there. absolutely. Very very yeah. upset about that, Coach Hill, yeah. because he did real well as the yeah. interim coach at LSU. So I think I think what it is, yeah, I think Clemson won. That's why uh, Clemson's going to play LSU in the <laughs> so uh, national championship game. Net. Whoever wins that, that's is a, the and Trevor Lawrence is the quarterback for uh, Clemson, and uh, and LSU has the Heisman Trophy winner. So that's a, that's gonna be a great game. Hey, where is Clemson? Is that, are they in Texas? <laughs> that's a good question. Do I don't know. know. We Steve, all know the name Clemson. Steve where the Kim, hell is it? Steve Kim yeah, would, know. would know. I think they're oh, yeah, if they're no Texas. Kidding. They're they they were they're, they're, they're a good track school. Oh, Kiki Collector didn't know you were from Ohio. He always yeah, thought you Columbus, were from Ohio. San Francisco. I didn't know Brian Custer was from Columbus, Ohio. He brought that up go. when he was he, interviewing. He, uh, he brought that up. Field. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Coach. Let's get to a couple of your okay, questions. Yeah, We're okay. going on a on a deadline here for our. Yeah, this is our year end. This is our on. year end roundup. Okay, so who did um, Lou Duvall win the uh, vacant WBA like heavyweight championship? Oh, from? that's a good did question. Honey Boy. Yeah, who did Honey <coughs> Boy beat to, to yeah. win that title? That would have been. Was title. Wasn't that in the mid nineties, yeah. Coach? Like ninety six, ninety seven. Exactly. 97. 97, okay. okay. It was a title that was vacated by uh, Mikulszewski. Right. After Mikulszewski he won, beat, he uh, knocked out a guy. It was Dalval knocked our cat out. From the ne Netherlands. Oh. oh, from the Netherlands? No idea. Oh. Netherlands. Eddie I should... Smulders. Oh, Smulders. Smulders. <laughs> okay, now I want to know about... <laughs> Sounds like somebody okay, sells TVs. You can, you can figure this out. What's Eddie's nickname? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy Eddie. Close, sells... you're close. <laughs> Is he fast Eddie? <laughs> you got it. Yeah, fast Eddie. Not bad. Hey, Fast Eddie Small. Okay, there you go. You know what? Kevin that. Kelly fought. You know why I'm familiar. You know. You know why I'm familiar with uh, Dutch boxing, not only because uh, Lucia Riker is from Holland, but Kevin Kelly fought twice in uh, in Holland because he was on the same shows as Reggie. Uh, what was his name? Reggie Johnson. No, no, a different Reggie. Uh, boy, now I'm gonna. Now the name's gonna slip my uh, mind. Reggie Jackson. Where's Reggie from? <laughs> no, but Reggie was was Dutch and was Dutch. and uh, oh, okay. and uh, Kevin had the same manager at the time, uh, uh, Stan Hoffman, who okay. well, who, Stan. who uh, put them together on the uh, on the shows. And and you know what? You know another trivia. Who else was on one of those shows? Was a Toro Gotti. I was there with Pat Lynch, and uh, oh, Toro Gotti. I think was his fourth fight. I think it was on both fights that Kevin fought at. And uh, Turo fought in uh, Holland also. Okay, yep. so I want to... Who's the most famous person that Melissa DeVal ever fought? Maybe Did she fight Mia, Mia St. John? Mm. From Detroit. Detroit? Oh, um, Saunders. Yeah. Uh, Joe... Is a Mary Jo. Mary Jo okay. Saunders. Mary Jo Saunders? Yeah. Okay, she was popular. What's Mary Jo's dad's name? Barry Sanders? Billy Joe? No. Billy no, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's a football player. Yeah. Played for the Lions. Yeah. yeah but famous. Yeah. Oh, the running back, Saunders. He, he was a, yeah, but I don't know he, the he first name. Tight end. <laughs> oh, tight end? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking of a different... Uh, That's why she sold so many tickets. Charlie Sanders. Charlie Sanders. Charlie Sanders. Sanders. Okay. I, I didn't know that one. Really good player. Yeah. I, 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 was that there. wasn't on my radar screen. Okay. And Charlie Sant and her mom is like okay. what organized like uh, okay now I want to ask you this okay so Melissa fought this one girl four times okay I'll give you her name you know Carla Witherspoon uh, I've heard that name okay what was her record 
Carla, Carla Witherspoon's yeah. record? I'm going to say it was... Uh, Melissa beat her all four times. Yeah. So I'm going to say she was. Uh, she had 17 wins. Close. Very close. Uh, seven or eight losses. Not and close. five draws. No. Okay, okay. Uh -oh. She's, she has 14 losses. She has 11 wins, 41 losses. Yeah! Uh, for you. you know who she was related to? Who was the yeah. former heavyweight champion? Right. Exactly. That's my next question. Tim Witherspoon. Tim Witherspoon. How See, they I they knew related? the answer before Coach asked the question. Very good. <laughs> how are they related? Cousins. Niece. She, is, uh, she was a Tim's, niece? Tim was her uh, brother-in-law. Oh. Okay. Oh, by marriage. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, That's now, why she didn't have a winning record. What, what's she didn't Tim's have the genes. Nickname? Terrible. Terrible Tim Witherspoon. He was a badass. Yeah. And could have been better than he was. Yeah, he was yeah, held he back on the promotional the side. Fought, yeah. Tim Witherspoon? He fought, he fought Larry Holmes yeah. when he was 15 he and 0. He fought, he fought Larry Holmes when he had yeah. 15 fights Terrible and Tim Witherspoon. extended Holmes. I think, I think Holmes split decision. split decision. How crazy is that? Yeah. Oh, I remember Holmes was busting up at the was end. Was that of the in fight. Nevada, Coach? He fought. Uh, uh, he fought. He beat. Uh, he beat Frank Bruno. Yeah. In in, in England. He did. So that's. He oh, traveled. he went to England. He see, did. Now that's an impressive. He won, and he's still. That's an and he's got a win. lot of fans in in England. Yeah. Um, he fought everybody. He fought Bone Crusher Smith twice. Yeah. Uh, outpointed him once, and then got knocked out in one round. Actually, lost his title to to Bone Crusher Smith. He fought. Uh, he fought Ray Mercer. He fought. Uh, what was uh, Ray Mercer's yeah. nickname? Merciless. Merciless Ray he was Mercer. One of my favorite heavyweights, man. He I was. He Olympics. was one of Latimer's uh, awesome. op opponents. And the greatest knockout of all time. One of his wins. Oh yeah, most brutal knockout of all time. Yeah, against Tommy Morrison. That was the one Kuchko fight since I started working with the brothers that I didn't go to because I was with Muhammad Ali over in Germany when he made the appearance he made the uh, appearance for the premiere of the Will Smith Ali film oh, yeah. and uh, he did a three day appearance over there in uh, Germany and so it was the same exact weekend you, didn't miss anything. you knew he was going to handle yeah. that that version of Mercer Vitaly almost, so got, almost got in a fight with Ray Mercer's oh. Uh, I would say posse it, yeah. because they came in the locker room and there was yeah. a lot of tension there yeah, no, and you know Vitaly was very protective doesn't, yeah, he doesn't of his uh, younger shit. brother so he was, yeah he was, was and he doesn't yeah. suffer fools as no, lightly I, I as remember, Vladimir remember that yep. Vladimir is like a nice guy but if you get on Vitaly. Vitaly's bad side <laughs> you don't want to be on Vitaly's ass. bad side yeah. you know? and where's uh, Tim from Phil Philadelphia yeah yeah isn't that where Buster Mathis is from okay now what was Carla Witherspoon's nickname Carla Witherspoon, that's man. I don't know. You don't know. That's beyond mine. Uh, Pugs. 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 Okay. What kind of nickname is that, Carla? I don't know. <laughs> and, and who? Uh, who was Tim Witherspoon? Who did he? Uh, who did he win the title from? Partner. Wasn't he a fine partner for uh, Tyson? No, for, no, no. for Ali? Oh, for Ali. Oh, well, he must have been a baby. He must have been a kid. I mean, like, literally a teenager. Oh, that was before. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That was before. So, also, uh, tomorrow, the 30th, is uh, Blair the Flair's birthday. Oh, really? He'll be 30. He'll be 30. 30 tomorrow. Happy birthday, Blair. All Wait, right. tomorrow's the 30th? He had a good year. It is? Blair, Tomorrow's Blair the 30th. Today is, today is the 29th? A... I know. Isn't it today the 28th? No, it's, no, it's the 29th. Yesterday was the 28th. Oh, I'm, I'm off a day. Blair, yeah. Must have been. I'm that, off, I'm I must be on Japanese time. Yeah. <laughs> Blair was a breakout face. So, Ioka's uh, not fighting. Ioka must be fighting on the 30th or the 31st. No, he's fighting the 31st, but 31st, it'll be okay. on the 30th for us. There we go. Because okay. of the time difference. So I, was off. Yeah. I was off on that. And that'll be a fight worth watching because yeah. Ioka's a lot of fun. Yeah. And you uh, you promoted his uh, U.S. debut, correct? That's right. Against yeah. a real guy, uh, a, McWilliams a solid Arroyo. guy against McWilliams. Yeah, oh, McWilliams came to win that fight. I was yeah. Mc McWilliams is a hell of a yeah. fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Who would you say? Okay, co uh, coach. Hey, Japanese fighters fight everybody. I have they fight a, the best from everywhere. I have a question for you. Speaking of uh, coaches, successful coaches. So we know probably the most successful NFL coach and the most successful college football coach who would you say is the most successful soccer coach for say say europe i got one for you Wait, I, have, I have no clue because i have a lot of relatives in do, germany do they play soccer in europe yeah they play soccer in europe no for uh and, and the eva should know this because he was very successful at dortmund 
and now he's very successful at Liverpool. Ah. Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp. That's Klopp. a that's K L O P P. Very name. also very charismatic guy. But uh, K L U P P. K L O P P. K L O. But going from dominating German soccer to then the Premier League and having taken Liverpool, who wasn't a very uh, you know wasn't one of the top teams in the past, now is uh, always uh, towards the top of the Premier League. Is uh, that's a huge. Uh, are you a soccer fan? It's a huge. Well, I follow. I follow soccer when my relatives are, are in done? town. No. <laughs> I remember when Germany won the uh, uh, World Cup in 1990. Uh, they they've they won, uh, I think, four times. They, yeah. Four or five times. So, that's, that's um, impressive. all right, Didn't we're going to get ready to. Play soccer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's pretty good, I hear. Yeah, he's good. He can bend it. Yeah. Bend it like Beckham. David Beckham uh, used to be your neighbor, and now yeah. it's the owner of the Rams. That's yeah. uh, th Those close. are the type of neighbors uh, Coach yeah. rolls with over yeah, there in, in Beverly Hills. Stan Kroenke is his neighbor, and he doesn't. He he still hasn't asked him for season tickets yet. I might have to go knock on his door when I visit you, Coach. The Rams. What are you guys, what are you guys doing for? Uh, oh yeah, what's the New Year's pl New Year's yeah. plans besides watching Ioka fight? I think we're gonna go to Marina Del Rey. We just got Don't back from uh, Marina. Marina's nice. Marina? Yeah, we were just there a couple days ago. Marina's very nice. But isn't there some kind of ceremony? Do they do fireworks? Oh, you know what? I was on the pier yesterday at the Santa Monica Pier. There's this marching band that comes through, and we're wondering, like, where's the marching band? And it was one of the bands from Mexico. Oh. I actually put it on my story on Instagram. One of the bands from Mexico who are going to be in the Rose, Rose Parade. Oh, cool. So that's always a great thing for, uh, you know, to watch the, look at the floats. After the parade, you get to see the floats parked there in Pasadena. Mm. That's always uh, something that's interesting to, like to do tourist, for right? visitors. We're giving uh, tourist tips now for Santa Monica. And don't miss the Santa Monica, I mean for Los Angeles, don't miss the Santa Monica track here. How, how do we get it warmer here? The sun, is, so sun, is, sun is shining. This would be the, like, smells good though. Right this now. would be a heat wave nice any now. other yeah. place, and here we're freezing our butt. So we're going to sign off. Any parting shots? How, how should uh, everyone drive, Dave, for the oh, for the new no. year? Don't drink, don't, don't drink don't and drive. Sleep. Don't drive. Don't text and drive, <laughs> and let everyone in, except when you get to LAX, because otherwise you go backwards. But other than that, let everyone in in front of you. There's no, everyone will be happy. They'll wave at you. You'll make their day. Yeah. They'll make your day because they're, drive, they're appreciative. Happy, happy but Oh, yeah, focused. there is there is soccer in the background there. Yeah. Should you love everyone yes. and everything and be happy? And how should 2020 be? Either, it's going to be the best. either positive or very positive. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> right? It's going to be yeah, when you wake up on, on New Year's Day, you wake up, you say, you say, Tom, you've got two choices. You're going to have a good year or you're going to have a, a great, great year. There it is. You can only yeah. choose one. There it is. No, it's true, yeah. but 2020 is yeah. going to be a great year. Should be a great year. Yep. Yeah. And we've, we've, we've already got a and we've got a lot of boxing, a lot of boxing programming on. Uh, hey, how about the boxing right in 2019? Lots of wow, lots of boxing. Crazy yeah. was so good, it really was. Yeah. And I thought, but I thought last night's card. I don't know why I enjoyed it. So it was one of the best uh, Showtime uh, shows yeah, that I that I enjoyed that quite guys. a bit. Yeah. Showtime. Yeah, no, it, yeah, was it was really It was it was entertaining. For sure. They know how to present a fight. Anyway, yeah. everyone have a great, great New Year's. Be careful. Be happy. Be positive. Don't eat too much. And drive, drive safely. Make very, sure you very, very safe drive way. like you just won the lottery, and right, Coach? Like, like you, like you, oh, like you want to get there. Hey, it's it's important. It's so important. It is so important. All right, we're gonna sign off from the sun, sunny Santa Monica track. The sun just came out through the clouds. Yeah. And uh, wishing everyone a happy new year. It was a great 2019. Looking forward to a, a great 2020. Signing off from, from uh, Santa Monica.